welcome back to Motion RC Live this August the 6th at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm James, joined by Alex, and uh, thank you all, as always, for joining us on what is the 31st uh, episode of the year. So, uh, yeah, today we're going to do, uh, I got some ZOHDs, as I said, they, they didn't win last week after we did the L39. Uh, we could have done them then, but I have a couple of ZOHD models that are all on the website, um, you know, to unbox, and obviously we're going to get them out and fly them. I just need some different FPV equipment. I have the smaller ones that we sell, but I'm going to need a couple of bigger setups to get in some of these models, so when those videos come, but we can at least pull them out of the box, see, you know, see what's in them, and... You know, we got the Sky Hunter, and we've got the Nano Talon EVO, and welcome aboard! I, it's not a welcome, it's oh, a Oh, member for two months, anniversary. Oh, that's new. That's, that's cool. weird. Oh, well, Marshall goes, hey, happy anniversary. Surprise me, I never saw that before. Yeah, that's, that's um, I want to give a shout out. Guy, is it Guy Pedroso? Uh, am I pronouncing that right? Um, that video was awesome. You shared that on the Facebook community, and... You know, whenever I do, I was look, always looking, I'm always looking for those five minute videos just for the starting soon. And I want you guys to go over there if you want to know about his FPV setup. He did a great pan and tilt. Looks awesome on that Corsair. And uh, I had to grow your video guy to fit it into the 16 by 9 frame. So, and I figured it didn't matter. But you have like the scale cockpit in there and you could see it. Um, you could see it. Uh, obviously, it's flickering. He said something up with his frame rate he's just got to get his frame rate right on the recording camera um but he's got the you know the real cockpit in there as well the um the panel if you will why am i forgetting what it's called now but you know the little screen in there either way it looks awesome so if you want to know more information about that head over to his channel uh ask him questions on his video like his video subscribe to his channel um that's why we do what we do um don't ask me any questions about it because i don't know but uh it looks awesome and Either way, it was ha I was happy to uh, share that, and thanks so much for sharing it with us. So uh, I see everybody's, most people are here. Uh, Corsair Smitty, Brandon Phelps, James Bowen, Jolly Pirate, Dads is here, Just Playing Crazy, uh, Wreck and Roy's I see. How, how are you guys all doing this week? You guys having a good early August? I can't believe it's early August already. Crazy. We were excited, though. We finally got some good weather this week, so we got out to fly a little bit last week. We could talk about that in a little bit. I had the Havoc out. Hadn't flown that in forever, and uh, it was great to just rip. But I brought some. It's been like about, I'm going to say it's been about three and a half, four weeks since I last flew. So, you know, we had something we had to film that's kind of, well, we took the bison out. You guys know about the bison. So, um, you know, I was flying that around a bit. Uh, but then, you know, at the beginning, I brought the Shrike. I brought the Dora, and I brought the Havoc. I didn't want to bring anything crazy because I feel like I was just rusty. I was like, let me just, let, I flew the Shrike first because I was like, let me let me train again for, you know, it's been a little while. We just had such bad weather on the times that we could fly. And, uh, you know, just sort of is that, that way lately. But it looks like the weather's finally turned, and this is a good time uh, to get out there. But either way, uh, I say we start with, well, we're going to start with, we have no choice. We're going to start with Hobby Squawk and the community before we get to what's on the table. And uh, let's get going. So we had some good shares through Hobby Squawk. Remember, guys, the Hobby Squawk Forum, HobbySquawk.com. If you guys, you know, want to talk to the community about any product, uh, not just a Motion RC product, head over to the Hobby Squawk Forum. People are talking about everything over there so the first thing up though we had well i'm going by your squawk name this is tool Flyboy, but this is derek he he's in our cs uh part of our cs team and he's been working on a king hauler so you know he shared a little while back sharing his primer he was priming the king hauler and such but he gets to uh number three you'll see the, th the third picture and this looks really great but you can see he started adding these boxes on the side like these scale boxes so just in the process of tricking out these awesome uh, Tamiya uh, trucks, I always love seeing them. You know, I, I want to get more guys in there to, to share pictures and such. It's one of the smaller, you know, sections of Hobby Squad because it's still new to us, of course. But uh, if you're into this sort of thing, I mean, that just looks really cool. I can't wait to see how he finishes, but the chrome on it, and it looks like I'm assuming he painted uh, the green that's there. So I'm... I'm looking awesome. I'm looking. I'm, I'm excited to see the uh, progress on this King Hauler as we go through. And then a few weeks, maybe it was last week or the week before, we shared some pictures from a tank battle. So this comes from Rich Johnson. Um, 
he's out in the LA Tank Club, and I had we showed a couple pictures from a day of them, but they were all like really close on the on the course. I said there were like no wide pictures of the how the whole setup sort of looked. So some more pictures finally came through. So you saw the crew with all those guys. So just like a, I haven't been to a tank club yet, but just like your RC flying clubs, got a bunch of dudes there just enjoying their tanks. And, uh, you know, just some more pictures of their whole setup and such. And everybody's got their IR systems on there. I know that's a big thing with the uh, with these tank clubs. They only allow, like, I don't think the Toro system can play with the Henglong system, but the Tamiya system can play with the Henglong system. So all these guys, regardless of what tank you get, they all end up manipulating them to be able to use the same IR system. And I'm sure... You know, like anything else, there are people trying to cheat it a bit. <laughs> you know, try, how do I get more range on mine or less range on mine? Looking at these shots, it looks like a mini golf course at the same time, you know? Like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. It's a and it's a mini golf course. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, totally, totally. But I, I really want to get to one of these things or even just to buy some. If you remember, I built that one little face for the tanks because we were going to do a tank battle at Nall like last year. But uh, that never came through to fruition but i used wood i just used a piece of plywood but most of this probably just foam except for the bridges and stuff so i think i'm gonna build we gotta build some more houses and stuff but i'm just gonna use foam this time because wood is really expensive <laughs> i feel i feel bad i wasted that piece of plywood on, on the front face what a waste of wood i should have saved it it would have been worth worth triple it's like digital currency now the price is skyrocketing so that's really cool, that LA Tank Club. I don't know where it is. I got to ask them. Um, anyone out there, maybe, uh, I'm wondering if Vic might know, even though he's not a tanker, but I know you're out at Apollo. Anyone else in the LA area know where that place is? Uh, maybe you could put it in the chat. It's it's really cool. It looks like a fun place. And what I think would be even better, obviously, FPV on the tanks. Oh, yeah. You know, would just make it infinitely better because you don't get the peripheral vision. Or with these tanks, you could probably set up three, four cameras on the sides and just flip back and forth. So you could see, oh, is he on the left of me? Yeah. You know, and then Gunner turn your seat, tank like, seat. yeah. Uh. And I would think, I don't know if they do, but um, I would think, here, come back to me. I would think like if you, um, what's it called? I just wonder for these tank clubs, because I know what like the Toro tanks and the Henlong tanks, they're, um, you know, the harder you push on the sticks, the less scale the tank drives, right? It's going to go super fast. So I wonder if they dumb it down, because they're, prob they're probably not using the ready-to-run transmitter that comes they with it. speed limit set up. Yeah, you have to have a speed limit set up on your tank, right? I mean, that's another thing that, like, if I'm in a Sherman, I should be able to go faster than someone in a Tiger One. Like, I got to be farther away. It would be great if they, you know, if... Uh... Alpha, you been there? Has he been? Alpha's here. But, um, you know, I know my dad was big into, my dad does table gaming, war gaming. My father, you know, for a year, he has thousands upon thousands of, you know, uh, Napoleonic figures. And he does table gaming and it's all dice rolling. And, you know, you got to be scaled depending on how far away you are. You're, they measure to see the shot and stuff. So, like, you know, Tiger One should be able to hit a Sherman from, let's say, 30 feet. But a Sherman shouldn't be able to do damage on a Tiger One if it's at the same distance. I mean, that would get a little crazy, but those are the type of things I'd be worried about if I'm there. I'm like, I want this to be real, you know? I need five Shermans to your one tiger, and let's do this. But it would look awesome. In, uh, RC Air Marshal, Insta360 camera, that would be great. That would be sweet. But it just looks like something I, I really got to do. There's no, I haven't heard any tank stuff around my area. Maybe there is, but... Or maybe it's just such a smaller niche. It's sort of like, you know, boating clubs. I, I haven't come across a uh, RC boating club near me, and we got a lot of lakes around. But, um, you know, if it's around, I would love to uh, go and check it out. So moving on, then we were in the uh, Black Horse Spitfire. So North 14 is your uh, name. He's got his Black Horse Spitfire looking like he's ready for Maiden, he said. So I hope, his, you know, he reports. But it looks great. And uh, that's his setup on the inside, nice and clean. Looks like he's got the added weight right there on top. He did say he had to add some weight to the front of it for balance. So I think that's weight on the top, right? Looks like a roll of nickels or something. <laughs> but uh, it looks great. The exhaust looks good. I like that. Nice, clean on the bottom. So uh, either way, 
I'm excited to see it when it is ready to go. And then we had Guy Ricken shared uh, just some... Be oh, there's another picture. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, That's the so full shot. I was reading Dave's comment that we have literal battlefields here in Georgia. <laughs> Tank <laughs> battle at Kennesaw <laughs> Battlefield Park. For sure. There was no tanks back then. You know, that would have been a different story. But uh, here we go. Whoa. Guy Ricken got some great shots of, of his Avanti. I mean, that is a... Picture perfect, clean, yeah, it's like unbelievable camera work on this, and uh, you know, I thank Guy for sharing. He shared that in our uh, in our forum, and it looks unbelievable. So I love, I love these. Looks like he, I'm not sure if he painted the canopy, or no, it comes dark, so maybe it's just the way the picture is. I don't think he did anything to it. It's it just, looks different. Yeah. it looks a little like he might have did something to. It. It's like, is that orange in the yeah, yellow like an there? Extra line of color in there. Yeah. But either way, the pictures themselves, you know, the composition of said pics, especially that first one, were just awesome. So, Guy, thank you so much for sharing that. Always welcome to share more. And all you guys, I see so many people here, you know, share up your stuff. Let's see it, man. Let's see it. And then uh, just in the Flightline Spitfire thread, two random spitties popped up. One was uh, Grossman56, Dan Grossman. And that looks really nice. They were just sharing. And then the next one, I don't think I ever saw LB. I never saw this this Spitfire before. No, and awesome. where have you been all my life? <laughs> that's that's a absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous Spitfire. Um, I would love to see more pictures of that. And I'm surprised because LB definitely submits to our contest. Yeah. And I never saw that unless it's brand new, unless he just did it. But, uh, you know, the way the comment that it was the picture was attached to just didn't seem like, you know, seemed like old news to him, if you will, <laughs> is how I interpreted it. But uh, it's new news to me, and it, <laughs> it looks awesome. Like, that's up there with James Bowen and, you know, Matt Miller and all the other people doing great Spitfire work. So, uh, you know me. I love me a Spitfire, and uh, that thing is phenomenal. So, uh, moving on. Yeah, right, T-Cat? I... That's what I said, too. Unbelievable. Uh, moving on to Facebook customer community. And we'll start with the picture that we put at the beginning. Uh, this was just a beautiful picture. I was between the Avanti and this, but I, I love this model. It looks like Tony Jensen. I think you're in, you're in here as well. Um, he shared some pictures. He finally got out Maiden. I, I didn't know you had yet to Maiden the, uh, the DO-335. And... Uh, it looks odd. I can't wait to see it in the air. I hope you get somebody to film a video of it because I'd love to see it. I see a lot of people in the forums talking about, you know, landing this bird. Or you said it in there. You, you got to land. You want to three-point it because if you try to touch the mains first, that bottom rudder will could oh, scrape so and, great. like, rip off. And then I saw someone else in a comment this morning on this Facebook post was saying that he wants to scratch build his and he build it with a removable or breakaway uh, bottom rudder. Smart, like yeah. if you use some thick magnets, like you might even be able to cut the wood there, use thick magnets and sort of magnet the bottom rudder. But then again, is it functioning? Wouldn't it, wouldn't it get ripped through the back propeller though? Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But then it wouldn't damage the rest of the model. Like yeah. you can make more replacement bottom rudders maybe <laughs> yes, you know like breakaway rudders but you're right it would just destroy and now tony correct me if I'm wrong did was it you that said you have two different sized props you needed clearance for the back prop is smaller than the front prop because of said landing i think if the prop's too big yeah then it gets chopped up by the pusher right and then it's i, I land perfect every time is there another picture of the back of this because i didn't even realize does the bottom is the bottom the bottom's a functioning rudder as well, so it's like rudder on top. Oh, it is. I think it is. That's wild. So the rudder works fully. It's like a full span. Wow. That's crazy. Almost, that's really, that's really cool. Because it's like a cross in the back, in essence. Like, you know, your horizontal stabilizer has two. And then, what was that about? I didn't turn my phone off. Hold on. We're live now. People are used used to me i'm gonna turn my phone off and hide it put it back there but uh bottom is full rudders i mean this is a model that i want this is one that i really want in front of me the real one had explosive bolts to separate the fins whoa what, do you, what does that mean what does, yeah, what does that mean, mean? Like, how do you explode bolts 
<laughs> Show me a knife edge. That's what I was just saying. Like, you know, in my head, when you turn in knife edge, you've got a full span. You almost got the rudder becomes a horizontal stabilizer, yeah. uh, you know, which is really obviously that's what it does anyway when when you turn when you roll 90 degrees but like that just in my head seems easier and makes more sense when it's done that but it's one of those models i like i said like the stum tigger like this like it's just weird it's, it's just cool. weird and i like the weird you know and it goes to that thing where the germans just at that time it was just like they were just throwing stuff up against the wall but then actually making it you know it's crazy that's uh that's awesome so either way, Tony, get somebody to film. Maybe uh, Two Wings Girl can film it. Patricia, maybe she could grab her phone and at least film it from the phone. I'll take that. I just want to see it. Um, not your maiden. Don't fly with me in mind, please, by all means. Don't make yourself crazy. But when you get when you get it dialed in and you're comfortable, you know, and you're ready to go, I would love to see it fly. So uh, that'll be awesome. Moving on to Scott Greenfield coming back. Uh, we've seen these before. His Gripen is awesome. His L39, but this is the first time he shared the picture of them together. So I love what he's done with both of these models. Two different schemes that, you know, again, always love to see stuff that's a little different. But then uh, he did have a different share that I stumbled on, and it's the next picture. Uh, he added some nav lights and lights to his MiG-21. So I thought this was really cool. He really brightened it up. And that looks really sweet. The pilot could toggle a switch. So back to Alpha in the comments, guys. The pilot could toggle a switch from the cockpit that would cause the bolts to explode themselves. Without bolts, airflow air, air would pull the fins off the fuse so he could eject safely. Wow. That's crazy. That's crazy. Wow, that's awesome. Unbelievable. Same with the rear prop. All separable. Unbelievable. Flying <laughs> flying torpedo. The MiG-21 flying torpedo. Yeah, it looks good. Well, that's awesome. Scott, amazing. Uh, you know, I love. I would love to see the, uh, the MiG in the air at, like, dusk. That would probably be bright as could be. I love it. Oh, I see the Petrinjic brothers are here. I see Hamilton. What's up, man? Thanks again. I mean, uh, you weren't here last week when we shared your... Uh, your Black Horse L39 video. Glad to see you in here today. I just got here. Just got here. I just got here. He just got here? <laughs> nice. He just got here. And now he's here for good. All right, moving on. Reynolds Keller. Uh, love this A4. I don't think we've seen this one before. Um, simple yet striking. I like all the, the flags across the, uh, the intake there. The blue. The outline of the blue all the way from the nose all the way up to the tail. Just something about it really pops and, uh, you know, exceptional looking uh, scheme there. So I dig that. Then going down, Patrick Langley uh, got himself a Panzer IV from Toro. So uh, one of those other ones, it's like the last tank. I really want one in my arsenal, whether I didn't get my hands on the Henlong one, which was gray, uh, you know, that same as that. Yeah. The Tiger One we unbox, but this one has, you know, definitely, you can see that uh, it's painted just as beautifully as the Stumtiger and our Tiger One that we unbox. So, either way, it uh, looks like a good looking model. Looks we need significant. An tank, we do battle. need an allied tank. Yeah, it was a little odd having the <laughs> Stumtiger fight the Tiger One. Um, wouldn't have been much of a fight, I don't think, at that range. Would have been over for the Tiger One. If it got hit with a 380 millimeter rocket propelled mortar, uh, there would have been pieces to be picked up. But it looks good. So hopefully, uh, Patrick, if you're out there, share some uh, outside. Get it outside. Put it up against some trees or put it in, up against some buildings. Would love to see it. And we have Mike Holder. Love these two, uh, especially the P-38. The graphics on his flight line P-38 with the snake on the side. The weathering, too. Yeah, the weathering. All Everything about it looking really good. So I was really excited about, um, you know, about this model. Oh, I see Josh Weaver, the speed the Germans developed. The speed they developed everything was... Aliens. You know, like, I mean, I think of it this way. Like, what, the war lasted... Obviously, they were, they were ready for it before everybody else. But, like, you know, five, six years, if you will, five years. And what was 
the engineering race of World War II is just as crazy to me as the actual battles that played out, you know, in there when you go into the logistics of the production and, you know, and how it was basically like engineers like, oh, they did this, let's do this, let's do this. And they were doing it so fast and producing it so fast on all sides. It was crazy. Just crazy. The, uh, you know, competition <laughs> breeds, uh, you know, innovation for sure. So, yeah, it was crazy. And the Corsair looks beautiful as well. So, uh, Mike Holder, love these two shots of two nice flight line uh, birds. And, yeah, thank you so much, as always, for sharing. My new popped up. Everybody knows my new. I am so terrible with trying to pronounce his last name, <laughs> Wadib. I'm terrible, but he's, like, known for these, like, striking panel lines and weathering detail. And he just shared this one picture of his A-10, and I just like the stair, the ladder is the cool, yeah. you know, is the only thing I would need. Like, that's cool factor for me, but then you add in all his detail and everything, and he just, you know, he's a professional at what he does, and we always love to see that. And now, interestingly, we had another Israeli uh, F-16. We've seen this before. We've seen this scheme before, but Kwan Anuka... Uh, exceptionally more weather than the other version I've seen. i um, forgetting whose that was. Why am I forgetting? We only just saw, I think it was only just last week. Um, somebody else has this. I think he's in the comments and now I'm just completely forgetting. Somebody will know. But uh, either way, beautiful, you know, it's a beautiful striking scheme from top to bottom. I don't know where he is with the blue, like in some big hangar or something. Yeah. But uh, it looks beautiful. Really, really, really well done. And you see even the bottom, like, you know, up close on the bottom. Like, he went hard on the weathering on the bottom, too. So, absolutely great work. And, man, love to see more of what you do because it looks awesome. That looks awesome. Oh, and then John Killen coming back. You know what you're going to see when John's here. He got his F4s lined up. Love it. Yeah, wreck him. Listen to wreck him. Go hit that like button. And then the rest of his uh, fleet love John's work. He does some great work. I see a Yak, the 262, F86, A10 in the back. Is that an, F is that an F15? I don't think that's ours, but so. it's there. I think it's an F15. The and then what's what's a F16 in front of it? Yeah. Yeah, so. above the F86. Yeah. Either way, it's a great hanger. I He's just, looking good. I feel like we gotta go hang out with John. We, could, we got like eight months worth of content. Of <laughs> each plane. It's unbelievable. Yeah, right? Just do four straight flights, one of each F4 in a row. You know, I'll make them hook them all up to the same transmitter and fly at the same time. And let's see which one, which one gets back in one piece. All right, and then the next post, I, I love these kind of posts too. It doesn't always have to be customizations as far as the plane goes. But, I mean, check this out. Jay DeJong uh, made himself, and this is the third one that he shared because you'll see in a little bit, but made himself a MiG carrier. And, like, he goes hard on these things. He got himself a handle. Like, um, he uses, like, aluminum tubing or some something that can fit, you know, to the same size unless he's buying extra wing spars just for the the crate but like the wings could pop on there and then think about how off. much you could fit in a regular car or a truck you know if yeah every, if every plane was like that that's you know he fits insane. basically the a10 the mig and i think he has an f22 all on the carrier yeah and like you could slide all three right next to each other in a minivan Easy. and not have to worry i'd probably still put some foam or just you know tie down the bottoms a little bit so they don't move but super creative and you know i'm sure you know like with this hobby community i'm sure he'd help people take some more up close pictures of of those things if you want to try to build one yourself because he's obviously got the dimensions he's done the math. <laughs> he, did, he did the math he did the math and uh that is exceptional uh, that that's great i mean i i don't have the patience for that but um <laughs> ju i just got here this post caused me to make one but it, it, it's awesome you know, I, I hang everything when I when I come in. But, yeah, I mean, the guy should almost sell him. But I don't know what he, uh, do you think he's a plumber? <laughs> Maybe. And then uh, I think this is the last one from Facebook. And it's Giovanni Pinero. Uh, 
with an interesting paint job on his hawk. Just, you know, the only way to say it's not bad, it's unbelievable. It's so different. Uh, looks like he just had some fun with the airbrush, and why not? It, like, pattern, looks like he laid something on it, but just something cool and different, and, uh... Love seeing that stuff, and I'll happily share the the different stuff. That just looks, you know, something about it just looks very cool. Looks very like different. Looks like a Grateful Dead concert. <laughs> <laughs> Catches your eye, yes. I think it looks, I think it looks great. So awesome, Giovanni. Thank you so much for sharing those, and uh, you know, it looks fantastic. So now we're gonna move on to YouTube. We had a couple good posts aside from Guy at the beginning. No. No! Uh-oh! You know what that means. Is there music on this or is it just... No. Yeah, yeah, it's oh, yeah. Man. Thing going on. I haven't, like, gone back and watched the actual thing. All right, let me move this off to the side. It is time to spin the wheel. This week's winner! This week, come on down. Boom! So what do we want to give away today? I'm gonna to put it at the top. I really, we gotta give away an Avanti. What do you get, Blue Dragon? Avanti has gotta be something that has gotta be given away. I've spun it and hit whatever was on the top, I think twice. So, uh, you know, wonder if I could ever time my spin to get it where I could just spin it where it needs to go. And let's see, did we announce our winner yet? Yes. We did? Yeah, well, oh, we Blues pulling, Dragon! Yeah, well, Blues we Dragon! Over. I was pulling it over. Blues Dragon! He's in the chat. And he is a community, uh, you know, captain. So, Blues Dragon, excited for you, my man. This spin is for you. Let me turn this. Is that good? Let me center it. There you go. All right. Are we ready? Let's Here we win. go. Here we go. Avanti. I know it. I can feel it. Is it an Avanti? Yep. And up, three, two, one. That's a solid spin. Spin again! Whoa! Yeah! All right, we got a spin. There we go. I want to spin for a live member. That's know, what I want. That once. I think we've yeah we've only had it once, which is surprising because it's two spot chances to win. Avanti, Blues Dragon, you could join me with your cup of coffee uh, on the uh, next week's show if it gets out to you ASAP. Oh man, so I wanted close. to give him an Avanti. That was full power. Yeah. I went full power on those spins, and we even got a second chance. But hey, you want a coffee mug? You are a winner, sir. So Blues Dragon, just make sure to email me uh, at contest at motionrc dot com um you know what i think the trick is i need to have whenever we have a guest on the show is when the big prizes come so we had air guardian on to talk sue 35 sue 35 hit yeah. we had you know um my, the colonel the colonel <laughs> here for the mustang and the mustang won um you know and, uh, griffin won that episode and the gr and then a griffin one yeah we've given some good ones but uh you know we'll get there and we'll put on some... Oh, and that's something... I'll, well, I'll mention it again later, but uh, AL37's, I believe, back in stock. Woo! So I have to check, because I would love to put an AL37 on the board. But uh, I don't know if they... They don't stay in stock very long, where it can be on the board for longer than maybe a week. But uh, go check that out, too. I know a lot of people wanted that one. These are the all-white, you know, the, the ones that had the little yellowing on them. Those have all been sold out, and now the new, you know, the regular ones are back. So uh, do that. But Blues Dragon, you know, thank you for being a member. And, uh, you know, I salute you with, with a cup of coffee, man. And you're getting the other one, the other version of the, of the <laughs> cup. But uh, it's awesome. So moving off that now, we will head over to YouTube. And we had a couple things. So we'll go with, uh, so, yeah, RC Timo. Uh, this was a new one I saw. And another one awesome. probably getting inspired by the smoke that we've seen from many and absolutely love this always love this 
And uh, the first time I saw it, I only just, you know, I subscribe to everybody's channel when I find them. I found this one. Uh, I think I mean, he might have posted it to Facebook, but either way, it looks great. The smoke looks awesome. Griffin was, like, built for it. Um, and it's awesome. Oh, somebody asking how you become, how you get a chance to win. You have to be a subscriber. You have to click the notification bell. And uh, that's all you have to do. And then, obviously, you would have to tune in every Friday to RC see if you've Timo won. So, the RC Timo, there he is. What's up, man? Thanks for sharing this. I believe you, you shared it in Facebook. It looks awesome, man. And your flying is awesome. Nice and close. High alpha stuff. Absolutely Great. love that, man, with the smoke. Keep making more videos, man. I happily share. And remember, everybody, when you see a video on here, I only show you a little bit of it. You want to see the whole thing? Head over to RC Timo's page. Give him a like. Give him a subscribe. Um, that's why we do it. So uh, that's awesome. Thank you. I'm glad to see you here too, man. That's awesome. Yeah, big salutes for RC Timo, for sure. Then we have Louis Not Pop Ponton. <laughs> There's a K, a P. I don't, I don't know how to pronounce KP. Um, but either way, I thought this was awesome. He has, We might have seen his AL37, and he's using one of those um, cameras that follow automatically. Oh, uh, well. So, um, you know, but it's uh, like an American flag Southwest Airlines scheme on his AL37. But uh, the thing, like, you know, I, I still don't understand how it works. Sometimes I this one seemed to film it better than other ones I saw, where it, where it like, ticks a little bit as yeah. it moves. This one seems to follow it pretty steady. Um, I don't know what kind of camera's on it, but either way, it's, it's a nice flight. But you know, if you've got a 4K cam on there, you probably push in and, you know, get away. If you were to put the camera closer to it, too, might have been a little uh, better. But either way, it, it does pretty good for something that, you know, is still relatively new technology. Like, it just missed it, just getting a little too fast for it. But, like, I don't know who's zooming it in and out, but he, he put it on there. Um, head over to his channel, at Marco, Marcio. Ask, uh, go to his channel, Lewis, K-P-O-N-T-O-N. Uh, ask him on that video. I'm sure he'll he'll gladly tell you. I think in the description of his video, he has, um, he has the name of the camera of what he used there. So, uh, that would be awesome. <laughs> put together a clip of me trying to pronounce names <laughs> that would be that would be a good one that's rough oh i'm seeing maybe start adding links to the videos in the description below i should do that <laughs> that's something There's no argument. that there is no argument i should do that and now now that you say that to my my ocd now i have to go back into every video oh, man. and just add all the links so that means i have to find every video <laughs> and oh man I should do it. That's only to the that's chat, only right. You know? That might be a bit easier to. Get You're right. There. You're right. He's a hundred percent right. Next week, it'll be done. Thy will be done, uh, for sure. Then, uh, just playing crazy. I know he's here. Part two has popped up of his. Is this part two? Yes, part two of his Jurassic Park AL37. So I just take him here quick and I just speed him up. Um, you know, this was a longer video of his, but they are well worth it. Anybody who's looking to do any sort of airbrushing, weathering, um, you know, Brendan knows his stuff, and uh, he does a great job showing you and explaining how he does things, why he does things. You know, just a, a wealth of information that um, you should definitely you should definitely be a subscriber to Just Plain Crazy. And go check him out because he's doing great things over there and growing his channel. Like so many people growing their channel in their own time. But look at that. Just, I love seeing it go together really fast. Yeah. It just looks awesome. And uh, definitely go check out his videos, man. He, he's doing great stuff. So if he keeps pumping them out, go head over there. Then we got John VHRC. I think I saw, uh, I think I saw GB in here. Were you filming this? Are you filming for John when he flies? I think GB's, GB's filming for him. But um, he went out with his A-10. It's been a while since I saw just an A-10 flight on a video. So uh, I commented on his video. But definitely go check out John VHRC for sure. Great pilot. Great channel over there. Him and GB. Fun duo, if you will. You know, GB is Robin to John's Batman. Wow. 
I'm just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's really funny. But, uh, oh, this was John recording this video of his buddy's A10. Ah, I'm sorry. I apologize. But, uh, that's really funny. Either way. Either way, it's a great flight by his buddy then on his A10, and I was happy to see it. Again, I, I feel like the A10 is one I haven't seen in a little bit. Now, next week, I'm sure there'll be 15 A10 <laughs> videos pop up, because it's just the way. Or the second I go to fly it and release a video, then they'll see more. John is Robin to GB's Batman. Exactly, David. Fair enough. Or maybe, yeah, maybe they're Robin and Nightwing and somebody else is Batman. But nice landing, put it down, and looking good. Oh, then we had another one. I saw this on Hobby Squawk. Uh, back to Diggit RC. This is the guy who uh, has all the construction equipment, and he put a different, like, he put a claw on his excavator. Like, I think it's a Tamiya excavator. It's not the Huina one, so it's not our product, but it was just too cool to not share. Like, this guy has, like, a whole construction setup, and he's just in it. And I love that he shares loading, this stuff. Uh, He's lo loading his king hauler. He's got the chains, like the scaleness of this <laughs> to, you know, to then move it over. Oh, he's opening the chains. So you didn't have the scale construction workers that can do that. But like, then he brings it over, drops them in like patience and, you know, precision to drop them on the truck. Like it just really, like I, this type of stuff, I was totally just found myself watching the whole thing. I'm like, this is just <laughs> really funny because I've played with our excavator and it's one of those things where you think it's easy, but it's really not. It's like you really got to, you know, it's a delicate balance to uh, get them to move scale, you know? I mean, you can move one thing at a time, but, you know, like a real excavator, you got to get in, do it, and then get it down. I find that stuff to be just, you know, the nerd in us all, right? I mean, we're all nerds who do this. Let's be real. <laughs> about something our our wives and significant others will probably attest to that um and then lastly on youtube so dig it rc love it keep sharing that stuff in hobby squawk now we'll move on we had another <laughs> we had another spitfire from probably the hardest name for me to pronounce uh he's been uh, we've shared his videos on the channel before arkadouge costion <laughs> Now it's in my head. But my goodness, if he can't fly himself a Spitfire, and I am so terrible. If somebody can phonetically spell that out for me in the comments, um, one of our European brothers here can help me out. How would me, as an American with a Long Island slash Boston accent, uh, pronounce this name? Man. That's, well, that's how his, that's how his, uh, that's his YouTube channel, unless it's, uh, I mean, that's how his YouTube channel is, uh, you know, that's the name on the YouTube channel. So, unless it's just a channel name, which is totally possible either, but how would I say it if it was just a channel name either? I don't know. But either way, Flying the Spitfire is looking beautiful, and, uh, I'm gonna take my Spitfire up next time I go out to the field because it's been a while since I flew the flight line spit and I said to myself I want to do that so now we got to you know I'm gonna I'm just gonna open up the talon one thing I've loved about these I have a few other ones I actually Alpha you're in there I have a couple that we actually don't have on the website yet so I don't know if they're you know they, they're probably coming but um if Alpha gives the okay then maybe next week I'll show some of those too but uh, I was excited to get my hands on this. Again, FPV is always fun. So, and I love the ZOHD models. EPO foam. So this is the Talon. And again, when you open the box, it's all right in there. And these, these are thicker boxes. So they do a good job of, you know, I never see any problems with these out. I know GB loves himself some uh, Zod. Is it Zod? They call it Zod, Zod. I think. I think it's you know, Neil before Zod. I say ZOHD, but what I love with most of the ZOHD models, the way they're made, all like quick to connect type stuff where it's like in and out, you know? So like this is just, it's just gonna push in, hook on, and then you can easily, you know, pop the tab uh, when you wanna, when you wanna take these things apart. Like they're well thought out designs. And this is the first time I'm seeing, seeing this one. Um, so here's the fuselage coming out. 
and I love, I mean, look how thick, you know, for something so small, but, you know, they're all thought with FPV at, in mind. They're like, you know, how do you say, like jigsaw puzzles because they give you the access to, you know, your trans, your receiver in this one, like your receiver FPV could be up here. You could pop it. They give you room on the top so you can, you can connect stuff here up top, you know, plenty of space in there for the battery. And then look at that. Whoa. Whoa, look at that. That's a cool mechanism. So I never saw that. So the ailerons are one servo. So you could see, like, Alex will zoom in here. This is really cool. I'm just seeing this. And, uh, you know, you could see you got your elevator and rudder servos back here. But then this is your aileron servo. And they move these arms, which are square, and they fit. That's your aileron control. Whoa. So look at that. So that, you know, I'm just thinking in my head, like, that eliminates what little drag you'd get, though. But, like, clean as far as, you know, no control surfaces on the side. That's a really cool mechanism. Like, that would be cool, like, on a... I wonder if that could be done. I'm sure it could be done on, like, a Warbird. It will be. But done. how much cooler would it be if your Warbird didn't have big servos coming off the bottom? And uh, it was just fresh and clean. So you don't have a servo. Like, I always hate that when, like, you know, a servo's right in the middle of, like, you know, the uh, your roundel. Yeah. It's like you got to cut your roundel around it. Like, you know. Wow. So that's the first time I'm seeing this one. The other ones that I... Alpha is weighing in. Too I didn't much like play that. on a jet. We tried. We've tried. Too much play on a jet. Fair enough. Fair enough. And then here, the motor. So here we got the motor. This is a 1870 kV uh, outrunner. But they just give you the screw. So this is just going to slot in. So I guess I have to do something else first before you put the motor in. And then they just have a little hole at the top for that screw. So the screw's in there. So that's supposed to be like that, which is cool. And then what else do they even give me in the box? So we got a spar. Again, square spar. We got a prop. And looks like something else. Oh, we got a horizontals. Which is cool. I'm going to dry fit this together. Because it should be pretty good. Oh, look at that. Magnets. Nice. So that's what's going to help hold it secure. And... It's just a different, you know, it's a different beast. Um, very interesting stuff. I, I love what they're doing here. This looks like some sort of skid plate sticker, maybe. Well, it is a sticker, but I think it's a skid, skid plate because it's thicker. They give you a bunch of uh, stickers and miscellaneous stuff. Oh, and then we got some wood. So we got a balsa. See, let's see if I could, just looking at it, can I dry fit it? So, okay, so the motor's the first thing you do. So let's just put the wings on, because that's probably going to be really quick. And then behind me, Cobb and Spa. The Cobb and Spa. <laughs> Pock the Cod, Harvard Yard. With the Cobb and Spa. Got, we got the Cobb and Spa over here. <laughs> Roasted. Roasted. I tell you, I watched The Sopranos couple weeks ago like watch the whole thing over again and i'm telling you it's like that's what i <laughs> was my family growing up like that's how i feel my household that's how we speak and that's hysterical <laughs> hey oh forget about it look at that so it just slides in very simple so let's see the mechanism and then just line up the aileron Make sure it goes in. Make sure it goes in the hole. There we go. And ba boom. Then it couldn't be easier. And then when you want to take it apart, you just pull back the tabs and pull on it. So I would just pop that in, and then it's out again. That's really, really well thought out. Cool stuff, man. Just different, you know. I don't see these too often, so I'm I'm really pumped about that. But the cleanliness of that is really nice so there we go just manipulating the servo back and forth so really easy to break down i mean not that you would ever break this model down i couldn't imagine you needing space to fit this somewhere but then these 
the way they go in. I'm just checking here for a sec. I think they go in. They're going to go in like this because they touch themselves inside of the uh, fuselage. And the same thing. These little, uh, little square carbon slot into another square. And that's what turns the, uh, you know, the aileron, the uh, V-tail here. Get it in there. Make sure you do it right. Just slides in. Flat. Let's check it out. I'm excited to fly this, man. Something about it, just again, different and interesting. So put this back on top. I love me the weird stuff. That's where that went. first so go from the back first and then press down sweet and then that. make sure i'm doing this right there we go and then it's a locking mechanism on the front that is pretty sweet and then i think it looks like this would be where your your camera's going to go in the front and then this is just a great to cover so they give you this little like Great, so you got airflow coming in, which is nice to cool off whatever you want to do in there. So I think in this one, I would probably put the FPV underneath uh, the, the hatch, maybe, and then just plug in the camera when you take it off. But then that would, you know, that blocks, it looks like just a little extra blocking so nothing gets in there. Not that anything would, not like you're flying, you know, that low to the ground. But that's about it. I mean, the only other thing I would take the screw and put it in. I'm not going to do that here. And then they give you a bunch of these little wood pieces that. Are they given any sort of rigidity? I don't say I'm going to have to look more into it, but. <laughs> Someone asked if we could land on water. And essential RC said, yes, once. <laughs> <laughs> in a lake? Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, it'll float there. It's really got, it's a wide bottom for what it is. It's just so interesting looking. I want to put some decals on it. But see, like, this to me, this looks like a failed German <laughs> World War II yeah. concept plane. You know what I mean? There was a prop on it with a prop on the back, like, you know, that's just weird. But very cool. I wonder, I wonder if she's quick. Because I've flown the Dart XL, and then we have the Drift. You know, the Drift is, like, more gliding option. You guys have seen this one. I gotta get out and do a proper video on that one soon. But then this is the, uh, you know, the Talon. I assume it's gonna be quicker. Probably not as fast as the Dart, but uh, still, really cool mob. For anyone We're interested in getting on the flight time. twenty to thirty minutes on this, wow, I believe it. And that's surprising too. Like I was shot with the Dart XL is like the wing that we have and. Yeah, you put a 4000 4S in there, which is crazy. But then you got the GoPro in. You got all your FPV. So there's a lot of weight you add to these by, you know, no fault of your own. That sort of just comes with the territory. And uh, they still fly for a long time, which is awesome. You know, on what seems to be such a small motor. But either way, that's really cool. So then I say, let me just pull out some of the pieces. I don't know if I could dry fit the Sky Hunter, but uh, let's see that as well. Because I'm going to have to take this apart, put it back in the box, and redo it for, a video, for an assembly video at some point. So let me get this out of here. Noons Airborne RC says you can get 45 minutes. On a lithium 45. ion 3S pack? What, what uh, milliamps on the lithium ion? Like a 5,000? Can you stick a 6,000 in there? What are you... You're not flying on a 2200, right? <laughs> I assume just enough RC. What up, man? What's up, people? Uh, where's Jason? He asked, does it have AS3X or a gyro? So when he's going to knock that thing around. Uh, Jason, no, these are, these again, these are standard plug and play models. Um, so you got to put your own receipt. You put people who are buying this, uh, you know, you're going to, they're either going to know their FPV equipment they want to use or that's what you're getting into. 
Um, but with like with the dart, I put a gyro in there. And I just had this conversation, I think, on Hobby Squawk um, with someone about the dart. When I first flew the dart, yeah, when the winds are too high, you know, if you have a run cam in the front, just the standard plane wobble from, you know, the wind. So if you have a high wind day, it'll fly. But if you're trying to record something, you're trying to chase something with like a run cam, you know, that's going to affect you. So add the add a gyro to it will help smooth that out. But then really like a lot of these, you know, planes can fit a GoPro and like the newest GoPro, the stabilization that's already built into the GoPro far exceeds that of say a run cam. So when you mix that with the gyro, I bet it's like floating on, Butter. you know, floating on air, you know, that's inherently like, you know, what DJI sort of perfected in their drones. Cause their drones, you see them like they're still moving a little bit, but you never tell when you look at the camera footage, you know, between the gimbals they got on there, the, you know, the dampeners and everything. There's a big combination of stuff. You know, we don't do as much plane chase. We usually chase with the drone, but that was always when we were first getting into it, playing with the dampeners getting the wow. you know when you had a gimbal like don't miss that you know because you were recording the you get jello you know jello footage and it's just useless like what's the point of doing this so now this one um alpha actually opened this box at the uh warehouse when they were in the process of transferring before he sent it to me so i think he pulled it out and he pulled some things out to make sure the stuff was in there and i looked in again so this is not how yours will come but I'm excited for this one because this is a the big Sky Hunter. So this is the twin twin boom, sort of like a P38 of FPV. But just looking at that tray, you could tell she's a big. She's gonna be a big, uh, you know, a big FPV platform. So let's see what we got in here. Ooh, look at that. And then oh, okay, so they do that. That's cool. So you could add magnets to this one. So if you want to close it up. It'll come in again. It's like, you know, hidden features with this, with these, <laughs> with these ZOHD models. I love it. Let's pull out the front. Oh, okay. So we got a two-piece fuse. Whoa. Whoa. That's a big. That's just the. That's just the center position. It's at 1,800 millimeter, I believe. So it's going to be a significant. Yeah, that's pretty big. It's going to be a significant uh, FPV platform. I wonder what the speed's gonna be like on this. They give you all these different foam parts. So this one, wow, you're gonna glue that in. So this one's gonna be some little bit of work, which is more than fine. Wow. So yeah, Alpha definitely went through this. <laughs> Thanks, it's Alpha. Like a clown car in there. I'm you blaming just keep Alpha. Stuff out. He threw everything in here. He probably just went through it because he wanted to see for himself. Why not? Makes sense. I'm gonna leave some of the little, I'm not pulling all the bits out. So check these out, like, these are awesome. Rigidity for days, big spars across everything. So you got your, so I mean these are for the booms. These are probably for the wing, main wing. And then these are probably for, cool, really cool. Let's see, they got the, uh, the sparring in there okay one two ah all right so these are these two are what go inside the wing so you're gonna be i believe like that yeah look at that and it's already centered they got a little piece there so when the wing eventually goes in just different but that's that's solid i can't even i mean i could break it but you can't well, <laughs> i can't oh i can uh alpha And then let's check out the wing. Nice. Oh, that's a significant. That might even be bigger. That's this is significant. Well, it looked like General Grievous holding General all those spas. spas. <laughs> all those spas. You got all these different spas. The Grievous. <laughs> that's awesome. So cool. So that's gonna close up in there. Man, well thought out. So now this one, oh, I got to add, this is like kit. This is kit kit. I'm going to have to put the servos in. Oh, baby boy. So this might not even be the final production version of this said model. Alpha, tune, chime in if you're there. Should I have opened this first? This is awesome. <laughs> but this is going to be some, 
We're gonna put that in. This is awesome. Well, this is gonna be gigantic. <laughs> That's all I can say. This is. I think this. This might even be the bigger version. This might not be the version on the website. Oh, the GH5 this is the there, big dude. one. This is. Yeah. <laughs> Let's put a DSLR in the front. Why not? Can you imagine? That would be unbelievable. CG is one third of the width of the leading edge. Wow. Cool. The only other thing in there is the uh, is the other wing. I'll leave it in. But again, really interesting. Uh, I'm excited for this one. This one's gonna take a little time to uh, build. We gotta figure out the. Well, we're gonna be we're gonna be playing a bit. But I'd be excited to chase something with this. This will be great to chase the warbirds. You know, get in formation with them. I'm sure it'll be a stable platform. I just like I said, I need more FPV gear. Nothing's worse than having to transplant stuff. You know, from one to the other to the other. Caroline Tyler SC, the Sky Hunter, well proven FPV wing, great platform. Yeah, the twin boom. I'm excited for it. it. Looks like it'll just be a fun flyer in general and different. You know, I love different stuff. So, always exciting for that. And it just like that, it is 12:55. Tony Jet paint up like a P38, right, or something else. I don't even know what would be the equivalent. Was there a real bird that would even resemble that? No cool new jet hidden in the box, James. No, no, for definitely not. Uh, moving on though, coming soon. So as we said, we went out uh, just yesterday, and what was awesome. Um, I don't, do you have footage? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so I got uh, the door the shrine. Ah, all right, fair enough. We got out and uh, we're finally joined once again by the major Patrick Crowisdale. Uh, he had a day off, so me and him went out. Like I said, I wanted to fly the Dora. And the only reason I did is because somebody on the last Dora video I did, I had the Admiral 6 Channel Stability Plus Gyro inside. And I got a comment that called me out saying, the plane flies terrible without a gyro. And I'm like, that's ridiculous. It does not. Um, <laughs> you know, like it, it's, I just happened to put a gyro in it because I was lazy and that was the first one I grabbed. Uh, let's be honest. But uh, so we went out and we were just, you know, you guys I said, so I showed that I didn't have a gyro, and then I told Patrick that I'm trying to take his Mustang out of the sky. So I did everything in my power. Uh, so you'll see if I did or not uh, when we fly. I said I'm gonna chase you down with your Mustang, and I'm gonna I'm gonna destroy you. But we had a great time. The first time I flew in a while, and first time I flew with Patrick in a while, and um, you know I I love that man. He's such a good guy, and uh, it was so much fun. We just had a blast in there, whipping around, doing what these planes are made for you know the dora and the flight line mustang are fun fighters and are supposed to be trying to hit each other in the air <laughs> as we do i did everything in my power to uh try to take them down I try to take them down to to <laughs> yeah i like forgot alex was filming and i'm just making <laughs> like the most ridiculous moves trying to trying to hit them uh, we had a great time though. That's what, you know, honestly, it's been a while since I got out and part of me was like, you know, this flight got me right back. I'm like, I got to get out next, you know, right away. Like you know, I got so busy with other stuff, tanks and cars and whatever else we're doing here. You know, it was nice to get out and just do that. So it's awesome. Uh, and then Alex got up and was chasing. I said, like I said, I hadn't flown in a little bit. So I brought the strike out and Alex has his DJI. What's it called again? FPV drone, whatever. FPV drone, the, the new called. FPV drone. Alex loves that stuff, so he grabbed himself one, and I said, man, go chase me in the sky, and let's do that a little bit, because power off on the glider, I don't have to do nothing. You just spin around me. Uh, and, man, it was fun to fly the Shrike. I hadn't flown the Shrike in a little bit, um, and I remember at Nall, me and Wes were having great time. We were flying them low over the lake and, you know, all around. Uh, if you guys, any guys out there who's new to this, um, you're looking for a beginner platform, man, the Shrike is perfect, perfect option to, to start out with. And anybody looking for a glider that's, you know, on the cheaper side, money wise, um, you know, it's a well thought out plane that just flies great. Nav lights in it. It's got flaps. So you get experience with flaps, which is something. And then the quick connects on the wings, the way the wing goes together, man, it couldn't be easier to just pull it apart throw it in the throw it in the car and then put it back together you know it's it's a really well-made aircraft that just flies so well 
That was it this one way. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I did not include it. No. You did not include it. The fir <laughs> My first crash in so, two and a half years. <clears throat> I, I stress this in the video. The Shrike Glider is not a hot liner or a warm liner. So if you take it up super high and try to dive and then pull up, you are going to lock out your ailerons. Their wings will flex to a point um, where you can't control it. And I almost lost this because <laughs> not only did I do that, but I accidentally, because I had the Dora, I grabbed the 2200 4S, not the 2200 3S, and I put the 4S in the Shrike. And when I, I powered it up, and I didn't think it, but like, it, shot off your it left my hand, and I'm like, I don't remember it being this fast. So I flew it for about 40 seconds till I realized, but I was just full throttle and went to like turn, and the plane wouldn't respond. So I cut power, and I'm like, let me just glide it, and then it came back, and then I was like, then I realized the error of my ways that I threw a 4S, uh, 4S battery into a 3S plane. So don't put a 4S battery in the Shrike and don't try to fly it fast. It's an enjoyer. It's it's one to enjoy and to uh, you know fly. Say Video way goes Day Ricardo. You are greeted, sir. Can you join the channel, please? <laughs> then uh, then I'll give you a big proper greeting. We'll give a whole. We'll give you the salutes and everything. But uh, welcome to the show and thanks for watching, man. Uh, so that's what's coming soon. A couple of those videos. Um, again, I told you what else I was flying out there. So hopefully that's down the line coming. And then I'm going to start getting out, uh, with some more other stuff. I still got an F-16 video. I promise I got to get back to the, uh, gasser. I've got some things that I got to do. And we got all this other stuff that we're going to have to get out with. So I get pulled in all these different directions and it, it, sometimes it's a little crazy, but I'm not complaining. It's awesome. Uh, thank you, Viduegos. I like you too, buddy. Uh, then that's pretty much it. So questions and answers. Uh, we Did we skip it? Nope. Questions and answers. I'll give you five more minutes, maybe ten if we get a lot of questions. But does anybody have any questions for me that is not stock related? <laughs> uh, remember, the, the warehouse right now is super busy. We did the move last week. Uh, new facility. So... You know, we're back taking orders, but remember, they are they are in the process of still doing a million things over there from sending out orders, receiving stuff, and sorting and, you know, exploring the space, if you're going to, uh, if you will. Michael Holder, you're on the replay. Definitely go check it out. I think we uh, saw what you shared in the Facebook section, if you want to check, uh, which is awesome. Is Moshe RC doing events in Northern California? Wine Country RC, I'm located in Georgia. Uh, you're looking at the the event staff guy. I don't know if I've I haven't made it out to California um, on my own. We don't we haven't had we haven't hosted an event ever since COVID. Um, uh, it's been a while. Events right now are the last sort of thing on our mind at the moment. Um, you know, so no, I'll, I'll just flat out say no. We're we're not coming to Northern California at least. Anytime in the foreseeable future. Well, me and you are, but yes, who knows? yes, no, but no. who knows for sure? Me, Alex, and I are not. Uh, boom, boom, boom. It's your Corsair T-shirt. Yes, uh, Teespring link is actually in the description of this video. Um, you want to find all that stuff on Teespring. We, uh, this design was made by Todd Breda, who's our graphics uh, guy, website guy. He's been on the show uh, before. And uh, I made some of the other graphics. We have a bunch of different options out there. So definitely check out Teespring because I just put a new one up the other day. It was a MIG versus F-22 shirt that uh, that Todd made. And I'll, I'll, sh I'll share a picture with you guys uh, next week. And then I was just in the process in the background as I'm playing with the tanks. I'm making some tank shirts because can't it always be just plain. I want to get some tanks, tanks, uh, you know, tank stuff. Please give us a hint for a new free wing or flight line product. I think the community is hungry. Well, Jets and Wings, I'm sure those hints have been given. There's only so much we can hint. Yeah. Uh, later pilots have to get back to work. Oh, Corsair, did, can you, is there much room? Is there so much room for activities at the new warehouse? For sure, I bet there is. Uh, what else do we got? They had the eagle on the top right screen for a few shots, lol. Ah, uh, Air Guardian. That's funny. Um, Skynetic Bison, San Exa. Um, anytime now. We'll, we'll let you know, I promise. I'm not going to leave people holding on. When we are going to announce something new, 
the day before you're going to know, or at least the thumbnail of the show is going to tell you that you're going to see something new. We won't make people uh, one out. What goes up? Man, can't control that, man. That's that's nothing to do with us. I'm making teas too. Oh, Air Guardian. Go check out his teas if he has teas. He can make anything. If he's doing Teespring, then you really have anything. Dom, thank you so much for joining, man. Um, it's great to have you on here, and uh, thank you so much. You should explore the live space. I don't know if you you do, but you should totally explore it. You got a good, your channel's exceptional. Um, bum, bum, bum. Marcio, I have no answer for you there. I wouldn't even be able to say it. Look at on a Sato three-cylinder radial 90cc gasoline burning engine for that Black Horse Giant P47. Yeah, so I said wine country. Will this engine fit in the cowl? Um, I don't know. Uh, you're going to have to get... I would say that's a great question for Hobby Squawk. Get in the forums, man. Um, people will help you out in there. Off the top of my head, I don't know. Uh, that's That's a little too... <laughs> that's yeah. a little too uh detailed for me to answer here that's a customer um, service question. yeah the customer service you can always contact customer service they'll let you know sun's out guns out yeah man yeah, get some tank, tank tops. tops like i was saying to you the other day alex said that he said we need tanks need tank tops but i don't know if i, if I could come on here I, I can't wear a tank top on this show that's Not on the show but oh <laughs> flying on the weekends and i was talking about me <laughs> i make the stuff because i want to wear it i don't if anybody else buys it that's just extra butter oh you stream microsoft's flight sim live you had oh you had alpha join uh, alpha doesn't text me i'm just gonna throw it in there i got a new computer downloaded it and i was like this is gonna be fun i'm gonna be able to fly planes and then like, i loaded it into an airplane cockpit and i was like oh it's a flight simulator <laughs> yes. oh no and like, i couldn't even get off the runway well what's his name um why well, am i forget his name when we were at jonal oh yeah that was easier than actually doing it on my computer. Like, a guy at Jonah. Why yeah. am I forgetting his name? I've G, seen him there, but starts, starts with a G. Anyway, he has a trailer that he brought to Null, and he has a real flight simulator in his trailer. Like half of his trailer is a full rudder pedal, everything. And <laughs> Alex and I got in there in you know an airliner, and man, if we didn't, you know, we were hearing pull up, pull up, and we went down. Why am I forgetting? I'm friends with him on Facebook. I'm trying to get it to pop up. Find his name, because now I feel terrible. But wow. it was awesome. Gene Carlo. There it is, Gene Carlo. Gene Carlo. That's Our it. Guy. Such a good dude. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that made me realize that, you know, I would not have been able to land the plane in the Hudson, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> I would have tried to get myself back to Teterboro and been in the middle of a bunch of houses somewhere. Would have been terrible. But, uh... So there you have it, guys. That'll about do it for episode 31. Who knows what we're going to be doing next Friday, but I will say we're definitely going to be spinning the wheel. I'm going to change up. It's time to change some prizes around. Maybe I'll add, you know, something bigger. we got some big stuff on there, but uh, we'll definitely change that out. And um, that, uh, that'll do it for us here. So as always, guys, every Friday, thank you all so much so much for uh joining us and having some fun with us uh it's always great to you know the show most half of the show is always dedicated to the community so get posting you know we want to see what you got um you know whether it's videos or anything you can share it on our hobby squawk thread share it on our facebook customer community um or just at motion rc in the description of your youtube videos so then it's easier for me to see it rather than a lot of the stuff i'm doing searches and i'm finding it on my own or seeing you guys posting um but you can always at motion rc just in the description of the video and that'll give us a you know a notification that oh you did it so uh wicked <laughs> wicked smart good show guys my boy's wicked smart <laughs> how do you like them apples um so that'll do it guys thank you all so much episode 32 coming up next week enjoy your weekend of flying driving boating whatever it is and we will see you next friday bye guys bye.